Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, we look at the Atlantis 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The Atlantis 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome is a 125th scale model kit, skill level 2 for ages 14 and up. This model kit was originally released by Ravel in 1957, so the mold process is different. On this side of the box, we can see our wonderful Cadillac sitting in front of this beautiful building in the back. This 125th scale kit features a detailed monthly piece body, two standing figures, decal sheet, is molded in Dakota red and clear, and has chrome plated parts. The data sheet for this car is on this side of the box, and we can see that it is 8 and 11 16 inches long. There are 48 parts molded in Dakota red with water slide decals. I will print this in the description box down below so you can read exactly all the info on this 57 Cadillac. And over here we have our paint callout sheet as well. And these are all the paints you're going to need in order to make this model kit look terrific. Here we have our instruction sheet, and I always like to start with this just so that we know how the model goes together before we actually look at the parts. Now these are the figures they were mentioning on the side of the box, and these figures actually remind me of old photographs of my mom and dad because they got married back in the 50s. They were uh, young adults, and I'm pretty sure my mom had a dress quite like this, and of course men always wore suits and ties back in the day, so this again reminds me of my parents. This wonderful photograph showing both the model and the figures was built by Larry Streback. To begin with, we start with our interior assembly, and here we have the firewall with the steering column being glued up underneath. There is a little cradle for that. We have our front seat and the front seat back, which glue together. And then you've got your interior. Now what's interesting about this is it's basically built like a modern model car kit, pardon me, with these side door panels molded separately, and the floor pan and the seats all as separate. So you're going to put your rear seat back here, your front seat into here, and then your right and left hand side door panels here, and then the dashboard goes into those little two holes there, and there are pins right there. Then the whole thing gets dropped into the body bottom. Here we have step two, which is the body assembly, and now you can see what I was talking about with uh, the body being molded right in the center up the belt line. So this body bottom, it doesn't have an engine in here. It's just a pan with an engine kind of bottom part of an engine molded in place. Then the side of the car comes up here. And here is the rest of the car. It's like a clamshell, like I was saying. And you've got the dashboard top now being glued up underneath in the body with a pin. And then there is this body trim, which actually includes part of the door. So this would glue down onto the body shell and then this would glue in here. And it says, we recommend to test fit first. Glue carefully and use rubber bands to keep the seams tight. Let sit overnight. I wouldn't recommend rubber bands. I mean, you can try it. But I found with rubber bands is if you're using liquid glue, it tends to, you know, where the rubber band is touching, the liquid glue tends to go in there and then it runs up the side of the rubber band. So that's just a little precautionary note. Just be careful on how you glue this together, whatever method you choose. Next up, we have the front and rear assembly. So here we're adding our headlights in place, as well as the front bumper and grille. Out back, we're adding in the two back pieces of our bumper. This is a split bumper, and in here are exhausts, as well as rear backup lights and whatnot. And you have your license plate here, which will plug into there. Panel 4 is showing our wheel suspension assembly. In case you are wondering, here we have the two-piece tires. So there's a tire front and a tire back. These are molded out of solid plastic. And here you have your nice chrome wheel. And there is a decal that goes in there, as well as a white wall decal for these tires. And these all push together here. Then you're going to use an axle and put it into the holes in here. And then down below, you see the undercarriage of the car. Now remember, this is all that pan with half the body molded up in here. Now here you've got your rear axle and your front axle. These drop down. And then the differential housing with the springs here and the control arms actually get glued into here. And here we have our front axle housing, which just gets glued into here. This almost reminds me of one of the Japanese model kits. Panel 5 shows our final assemblies. Here we have our rear window being glued into place along the back. Then we have our steering wheel being glued to the steering column. There is an autotronic eye. Now these things were used back in the day for uh, parking lights. So the parking light would be up here and as you came up to the parking light, 
or the traffic light, pardon me, the colors would reflect down into here and then you could see without having to look up at the traffic light what the when the light was going to change or whatever color it was. We also have a hood emblem here being glued to the front. Now here's the front window and you've got the little vent windows which glue on the side. You're going to have to paint some chrome around here or use bare metal foil. And then the front glass gets glued down right here on the top of the dashboard, basically. And then the roof itself gets glued in between the two points of the back glass and the front glass. So again, you can see this is quite a different way of building to our modern standards. That's because back when this kit was made, they didn't quite figure out how to make a one-piece body at that stage. So that's why you're seeing all these separate components and the way they're crafted. In step six, we get into the figure assembly, and I personally like figures. How about you? If you like figures, let us know in the comments down below. Here we have the typical two-piece figure, like back in the day. So you've got the front of the man and the front of the woman, and then there's the back of the man and the back of the woman. We also have all the color callouts for the different paints you're going to use. So you've got yellow, you've got a flesh tone, dark green for the sash here on the dress, dark green or green for the dress itself and then flesh on the hands and same as on the back for the man you've got black pants you've got a white shirt here it's wearing a cummerbund as well and then you got the flesh colors and black hair of course you can always paint these any way you like just take a look at old reference photos from the 50s of uh, fashion designs and whatnot here we have the body for our 1957 cadillac el dorado brome and as you can see again it's molded like very flat actually now what we have here is the door handles and we've got the cowl up in here as well as these spears with that come into the front fenders again it's actually really nice but it's going to be a little bit more tricky than what we're used to in the modern age for assembly just because of the way this thing is molded the big long seam line right in here is going to have to be sanded nicely all the way the length of the car there's also where it's a part uh, attached to the parts tree and that's going to be something really interesting to cut off now i will actually show you here in this video what the body looks like when you do get it all together now this is not quite right because back in the 90s somebody was making a resin mold of this car and they had altered it in order to make it like a modern casting of a one-piece body. So I'll just move this out of the way. Now, that's what it'll look like when you get everything glued together. So you can see how tall this actually is in here. There is an issue with this kit. You're not going to get a 100% accurate 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. There was some kind of weird history with this on how they actually molded it. And, uh, I can try to find that again, but I'm not really sure. But overall, the basic problem with this kit is that it was designed to be something else. I think it was designed to be a show car or something like that. And then it got altered into the state you see it in now. So this is basically what it looks like if you were to add that roof on, which was separate add on. Well, when the lower part of that body gets attached and then that weird molding, which we'll take a look at in a minute here. Next up, we have the lower part of the body for our Cadillac here. Thought I'd switch my stick to gold so you can see it against the red. So if I bring this up, what you can see is the molded in place engine up underneath, as well as the exhaust pipes and the mufflers, and the area where you would glue on the rear differential. And again, we've got the sides of the car coming up here, as you can see. So that top clamshell, it's gonna come along here. Whoops. Come along here and get glued in here just like that in order to make the proper El Dorado. So actually the way this looks is that side strip that we'll see in a minute here looks like it would cover over a multitude of sins where this big seam line is. So maybe maybe Ravel was actually onto something back in the day. But again, they didn't know how to mold this as a one piece like that resin kit. And uh, this is sort of the result. Now there are a couple of other models that are like this, the, the uh, Pontiac Club de Mer, as well as the Lincoln Futura kit were also all split up the middle. Now if you can handle this and you like this kit, then uh, you know, I, uh, I hope you can get it all together and make it look quite nice. Our next parts tree includes those side pieces. 
as well as what looks like plastic axles. And then we also have the front lower A-arms. Now, if we look at these up close, the front A-arms are, are super smooth. In fact, there's no detail on there whatsoever. And then here we've got these sides. So I'm holding this together very carefully. I just want to check that theory of mine. No, actually, this doesn't cover that seam line at all. So it's going to be up to you to get your putty in here and, you know, whatever else you need in order to make this seam line that's splitting the car in half disappear. But overall, this, this is really good. You can also add your chrome up in here separately and then glue it onto the body later. And that should make chroming this just that little bit easier. On this part street, we see the floor as well as the separate roof and the rear differential. One thing that you could do with this is you could actually make this a convertible and just leave the roof and the back window off and then make your own downed convertible top for it. Or if you can find a up top, that would go on there as well. Now one thing that's interesting about the floors, you can see that there is some texture in here. But the way this texture is, it's not really consistent. It almost looks like somebody took a grinder with a really small like arrowhead tip and went ear, ear, ear all the way down here to make this simulated carpet so again that's a little bit odd but you can see right here it says copyright 1957 now they blanked out Ravel I think and they put in Atlantis models <laughs> a little bit of a cheat since Atlantis is a fairly new company it wasn't around in 57 but at any rate that's what they did there are some mold marks up under the hood and the number which you'll have to take out with your number 16 hobby blade or some sandpaper. There are some mold marks under the floor here, but again, you can sand those out. Overall, though, this is quite simplistic for what you get. Carrying on with our interior, here we have our door panels. These look quite nice, actually, considering the vintage of this kit. They are molded separately, so you get accurate-looking door handles, as well as armrests. This is a beautiful way to do this. Here you also get the man figure and the woman figure. And again, they remind me of my parents back in the 50s, basically on their wedding day. <laughs> now again, really nice-looking interior right there. A little bit soft compared to what we have now. There is a bit of a bend in the door panels, which is natural for that Cadillac, just with the body shape. Looking at the man, there is a little bit of flash around his hands and whatnot, but you can easily remove that if you are up to the challenge. Looking at the lady again, looks quite nice. Typical 50s dress. And there it is in the back with the big, beautiful bow. So if you really like these figures, let us know in the comments down below. They always look good alongside the car. Gives it that nice 50s feel. Here we have the rest of the interior components, which include the top of the dashboard, the bottom of the dashboard, the seats, the seat back for the front seat, our Autotronic eye, as well as the steering wheel and the steering column. As you can see, there is a bit of flash around here, but nothing too serious. Now I'll just back these out of the way for a minute. One thing about the front seat, is that it actually has molded in it the back. So that's where you know where the seat back is going to go is right into here. And right there it says bottom. Now the reason why they do that is because if you look at this seat, there isn't really much distinguishing it from being top and bottom. It's basically you got those seat adjuster rods right there and then yeah, like what's the top and the bottom? So thankfully they did write it in here so you know which way to glue it down. There's our back seat again and it does look quite nice. So here's our seat back. And now we just gotta find where it says back. This would actually get upside down in here, I think. It goes like that along the back and looks quite nice. You can always paint this panel in here a different color then the rest of the seat in order to make it look really good. So moving that out of the way, here we have the bottom piece of the dashboard. Again, you can see the gauges in there as well as the speedometer up top and this nice air conditioning vent or maybe even big radio speaker. Those that had one of these Cadillacs can let us know in the comments down below what that is. There's the top of the dashboard, and you can see it would go on there again with a little bit of gaps. Now, if you want to see what this dashboard looks like as a solid piece, again, we go to that resin kit that somebody so gracefully actually put together, cleaned up and made look really nice, like more of along the modern way. So there's our gauges there. These would be chromed up. 
Now, do they actually have those lines in there? Not quite. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. Okay, so again, looks really nice. You've got the big glove box right in there, actually. It's pretty cool. The uh, one issue with the resin is there are some sink marks in here, but we're not building the resin kit, so you don't really have to worry about them. The way you fill them is actually crazy glue and baking soda. But again, um, that's just an example of what this two-piece red dashboard looks like once you get it all glued together. And moving into our steering wheel and steering column, again you can see that this really does look like that Cadillac steering wheel. You've got your manual shift here as well as your turn signal levers, and there's that Autotronic Eye. I was thinking that this would actually be clear, but it's not, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Because the real ones had a clear prism lens inside them, and that's what uh, allowed you to see what that traffic light looked like. So again, very wonderful pieces in here. Now, how did I do this? <laughs> Something like that. So very wonderful pieces in here for the simplicity and the vintage of these molds. Now, if you want to get an idea of how that interior looks when everything's glued together, again, we go back to this resin kit I got in the 90s. Now, I never did get to finish painting this dashboard, but I'll just remove it here. You can see those wonderful door panels. This is what it looks like with some bare metal foil in there. My techniques back then were kind of basic. I improved a lot since there, since 30 years ago. But again, this is how it looks. So there you've got your chrome speaker in the center of those seats and the chrome back plate in here. I put a little chrome bar along there and the different color, different brown tan color I used. Now this is really heavy because it's a solid resin. And the purpose behind this guy actually making this resin kit was to adapt this car onto the Monogram 1959 Cadillac kit. And this would actually backdate it by two years and allow you to put on that full suspension from that kit underneath. But I never did get mine done and I don't know, it kind of turned into a train wreck of a model for me. But the uh, dashboard again, it fits nicely in this area and that's how it would be on your plastic model. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and you get that wonderful El Dorado grill in here, as well as the Dagmar bumpers. There's the back with more Dagmars on here. We've got our headlights, we've got the Cadillac V, we've got our license plate shroud, and our wonderful Cadillac wheels. So bringing this up to the camera, you can see, oh, there's even a turn signal or a driving light molded in here, which again is sort of free floating on that little peg. And then we've got our grill. Now you can get a really good black wash in here and make it look quite nice. There's our headlights. Again, add a little bit of a light blue tint wash in here and it would look more like a headlight than just being, you know, chrome inside there. There's the hubcaps. Again, Eldorado, beautiful ones. You could actually use these on other model cars of the 50s just to give it that nice little custom Cadillac look. Then here we've got our fins, and there are some taillights in here, either they're in here. I do believe one of these is also an exhaust pipe port. I can't quite remember. I'll we'll have to take a look at your Cadillac Eldorado for sure, just to make sure you're on the right track there. Now I just want to default back to that resin kit that I made many years ago. As you can see, I added in the black wash into that grill and painted the rubber ends of those Dagmars. Again, it does look very nice, but one thing I noticed here is that those little turn signal lamps are not part of that bumper at all, which is a little bit unfortunate. So if I ever do get this resin version of the Eldorado finished, it won't have those nice little turn lights. Here we have the glass components for our Cadillac, and the nice part is that the chrome trim is actually molded to the glass, so this would be very easy to paint with your Molotol chrome pen, or even using bare metal foil. Now this is the front windshield, and what we have are the little side vent windows molded separately, which would glue on those sides here. The only thing you would have to make if you wanted this as a convertible are of course the sun visors, which would be gluing on here and here. And you might want to actually remove this little strip here because that's what's holding the top on. Or maybe not because it's not really sticking out that much. You might be okay. But again, feels really nice. Got a nice texture in there. 
They are scratch free, which is always great. And again, would go together quite easily. Just as easy as one, two, three. Here we have our wheels, and these are molded again in that red color. They are plastic, the same hard plastic that the body is made of. And you've got one of these being the front of the tire and one of them being the rear. I'm not quite sure what they are. Maybe if we turn it over, it will say up underneath, which it does not. But basically, this is how these tires go together. So there's one that's flat, and then there's one with these four little pin thingies that are in here, or I guess they're tabs. And you would use your liquid cement in here, at least I would anyway. Put the liquid cement in here. Of course, cut one off, or cut these off. Put the liquid cement on here and then sandwich them together. You know, you're taking one and you're turning it over and squishing it on there. But as you can see, there are no like name brand of tire. It doesn't say Goodyear or Firestone. There is a tread on it, which you can kind of make out here. So again, once you glue it together, you can take some sandpaper and just run it around lightly on the outside of that uh, tire and that'll take off that seam line and make them look quite nice. Atlantis has included a really nice but very simplistic decal sheet in here which includes white wall tires and the Cadillac symbol for the center of the hubcaps as well as a New York State or actually Empire State license plate EKX553 and a Virginia license plate 514540 these would actually be plates that they used back in 1957, so that's a nice touch. The only thing that I kind of wish they had put on here was Eldorado script for the sides of the car and the hood and the trunk lid and anywhere else that those scripts show up on the real vehicle. So why did I choose to get this model kit for my birthday as a special request as opposed to trying to finish building this 57 Eldorado resin kit, which I already had? Well, I'm going to explain one thing about this. So back in the day when resin kits were coming out, this is before 3D printing and all that stuff that we have now. So people would build up a model and then they'd make a rubber mold and they'd put the model kit in the mold upside down and they'd let the rubber harden up so that it had all these details in the rubber up along the side and whatever, and that was making the mold. And then what they would do is they would turn the mold, well, they'd pull the model out first, then they'd turn the mold over upside down, and then with a big tub of two-part resin and a paintbrush, they would paint inside that rubber mold until there was enough resin to actually make the car look nice like this does on the outside. The only problem <laughs> is that that was called slush casting. And slush casting, it ends up being very thick in all these areas. Like, you can see how ripply and gross this actually looks right along those side panels. And it's unfortunate because what happens is when you're trying to put on, like, the undercarriage or especially glass, where it's all super thick up in here around the windows, it doesn't really want the glass to get in there and you're constantly having gaps and you've got a sand in here and it's all upside down and backwards and in reverse and it's just a huge mess. So for me to get that new Eldorado kit, even though I have to build the plastic body, it's nice and smooth inside that plastic body. So what would your reasons be for getting this kit? Actually, the plastic kit. Let us know in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where we got to take a look at Atlantis 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome model kit. Quite a different way of building it, isn't it? The old way. So if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Don't forget to check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca and you can go there by clicking this link right over here. And until next time, everybody, Happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.